Hi everyone, I wanted to show you some tips and tricks on using the kitchen sink stamps digital backgrounds. They're called DigiFiles. They're located on the website. If you scroll down, you'll see digi, digi printables. Click on that and you'll see there's a wide variety of digital files that you can use as backgrounds for your cards and for foiling. Using them in a uh, mink machine, what is called toner foiling, or if you don't have a mink machine, your laminator. You would print these out on your laser printer. They only work if you print them on a laser printer. So there's a lot of great backgrounds and I'm actually going to be creating a card using some of these new hearts backgrounds that were recently created. Anyways, if you see one you like, just add it to your cart and then you can pay for it when you check out and then it's yours. So I'm on my computer now and I'm just pulling open a file and this is the same background that I just showed you on the website. It has four pages of digital backgrounds and what I'm going to show you is how I use this program. It's called my it's called Libre Office, L I B R E Office Draw. I open up a new draw workspace. It's blank, and I'm going to pull in the file called Sweetheart. That's the name of the digi file from Kitchen Sink Stamps. Once I have it, I can now manipulate it. You see how I can change it from side to side, but I'm going to show you how I can make it larger or smaller. The button at the top, which looks like a picture frame, is the crop button. You get these red marks. Once you have them, you can drag the white space and you're basically getting rid of that white space. Okay, so far I haven't changed anything about it. It's still the same height and width as it is when you get it from Kitchen Sink Stamps. Now I'm going to show you how I can actually change the height and width of the image and I have a little button at the bottom which is the height and width dimension tool. You can make it any size you want. Um, eight and a half by 11 would be your maximum size. So I'm going to type in four by five and a quarter which is the normal dimensions of an A2 card. It's also going to help us make this image smaller. All right, so we've got what you're seeing here is the panel for an A2 card. You can make it slimmer if you'd like by dragging the side of the image. There's little dots that you can click on and drag. You can make it shorter if you'd like. I'm going to zoom in a little bit so you can see better what I'm doing. If you have never heard of this program, it's free and runs pretty much just the same as the other program that you would have to purchase. I'll just leave it at that. It's called Libre Office and it is free. You do have to download it though to run it on your computer. All right, so now we're back to four and a quarter by five and a half. I'm taking my mouse and I'm dragging over the image and then I'm left clicking on my mouse and I'm clicking copy and then I'm left clicking again and clicking paste. Now I have two A2 card panels that I can print from my laser printer and I'm going to actually manipulate this so that I can get four on one page. I'm going to take my mouse and I'm going to drag it over both of these squares, rectangles, in a minute once I get everything lined up. Sometimes it just takes a little bit of time for the adjustments here, so bear with me. I'll go ahead and line these up so that they fit on the top of the page correctly. It takes a moment here to get these to be lined up, but it's worth it because now I'm going to take my mouse, I'm going to drag it over both of these rectangles and then I'm going to be able to copy them both at the same time. All right, I should be dragging my mouse here in a second. All right, here we go. 
I was just lining everything up. I'm going to click the left side of my mouse, click copy, click the left side of my mouse, click paste, and then I'm going to drag that down. So when it copies, it copies directly over top of itself. So you have to just click on it and drag it down to where you want it. My goal here is to line these up so that I have four card panels that I can foil um, and they'll be the proper size. So that is how I change things from what I get when I get my digi file from Kitchen Sink Stamp Sometimes I do change them and this is the program that I use. There's another one that Stacy um, from FSC, um, which is our Facebook group uh, for um, Nancy and I who are, Nancy and I are both on the design team for kitchen sink stamps and she and I together have a Facebook group. Stacy's on our design team and she uses Inkscape. So that's another free one that you can try. All right, let's change this to slimline size. We're going to go for eight and a half by three and a half. So our width would be three and a half and our length would be eight and a half. And this is a pretty big slimline panel. I'll probably end up trimming it, but at least I have something that I can work with. So I took my mouse, I don't know if you saw, but I uh, dr drug my mouse over the entire panel. I clicked on the left and I clicked copy and then I clicked paste. Now I have two. Now I'm going to add another page and I'm going to go back to that file that I received from Kitchen Sink Stamps that has all of these beautiful backgrounds and I'm going to grab another one. But now I need to use the snip tool. For some reason when I import the file or import the picture, into my Libri draw, it only copies the first page. And I'm not sure why it does that. I couldn't figure it out in time for this video, but that's okay. I have an easy working workaround. It's called Snip. It's a tool that is included in any um, PC computer. And I'm not sure about Apple because I don't have Apple products, but I am in the digi file. I drag over the area with my mouse and then I click copy. I jump over to LibreDraw and I click paste. Essentially, I just took the image from the PDF and I put it into the LibreDraw. PDF is the type of file that you receive when you download your digi files. So I'm changing this to be the dimensions of an A2 card and then I'm copying it and I'm pasting it and I'm dragging it to be side by side. This lined up relatively easily. I had an easier time lining these up. Now I'm going to drag my mouse over the two panels, hit my left side of my mouse, which is copy, hit it again, which is paste, and then pull it down and then I have four beautiful panels ready to go. Let's do another page. Let's insert page three and grab some more from the digi file. All right, we've got two pages done. Now we're going to start page three. Okay, every time you want to do a new snip, you have to just close the snip that you did and you can save the snip. I don't save my snips unless I absolutely need to. Start a new snip by clicking snip. And I'm going to drag my mouse over the area that I want to copy. I'm going to left click on my mouse and click copy. And then I'm going to go into Libri Draw and I'm going to click Paste. For some reason, I, I restarted here. So you'll see that I'm copying a section. I'm I am left clicking on my mouse and I'm then going into Libri Draw and I'm right cl left clicking on my mouse again. And that is basically pasting it. So I copied and I pasted it using the Snip tool. And I'm going to twist it now. So on LibreDraw, the little squares that are around your image are normally green. If you click on them one time, they turn red. When they turn red, you can rotate everything, which is really nice. So I'm rotating this file and I want it to be horizontal and I want it to be the size of a slimline. So I'm changing the dimensions to eight and a half by three and a half. 
And then I realized, wow, that eight and a half is pretty big. Let's make it a little bit smaller. It won't be a jumbo slimline card. It'll just be slightly smaller. It'll probably be about eight by, again, three and a half, which is fine for a slimline card. And once I get this adjusted and get everything lined up the way I think it should be, I'm making sure it's not crooked. It's kind of hard because it's kind of swirly. So you're wondering, is that an optical illusion or is it actually crooked? All right, now is once I get it lined up, I'm going to take my mouse and I'm going to drag over the entire area of the image that is going to then allow me to left click on my mouse, copy, left click on my mouse, paste, drag it down with my mouse. And now I have two slimline panels. Uh, you can click paste again. You don't have to do the whole copy thing all over again. Just click paste because that image is still on your clipboard. You can paste it one more time, two more times after this, as many times as you need to. And then you'll um, be able to have three slimline panels of that image from Kitchen Sink Stamp on one page. So this is how sometimes my images might not look exactly the same as the Kitchen Sink Stamp files. Now I'm going into page four here, by the way, I just inserted another page. Um, they are the same files. They're just usually um, changed slightly. All right, so we're gonna go into our snip. We have to delete the snip that we just did. And now we have these pretty little hearts. And I'm going to snip a new section, drag my mouse over the image. I'm going to left click my mouse copy. Now I'm on my blank page and I'm going to left left click my mouse paste and then I would like to make these to be A2 cards so I'm going to go ahead and change the dimensions to be four inches wide by five and a quarter height that's pretty good for getting these four panels to fit on my um, eight and a half by 11 piece of paper. I do have to adjust it slightly. If it's too far over the margin, sometimes some printers will not like that. <laughs> but my printer seems to just print. It doesn't seem to care that I go over the margins a little bit. And now I'm just dragging my mouse over those two panels, left clicking my mouse copy, left clicking my mouse paste, taking it and dragging it down below. Now I have four A2 panels that I can print on my laser printer and then I can foil them with foil. So they're a little bit slightly different from what you would get it when you get it from Kitchen Sink Stamp. If you have some kind of um, software on your computer that allows you to do this, you can always play around and see what, see if you get some cool results. Just be careful. Sometimes when you have words, they don't copy so well and you just don't want to distort the image too much that it just doesn't look natural. It just looks distorted for lack of a better word. All right. So now that you've seen me create these, it's kind of a crash course. It does take practice. Um, if you're new to computers or you've never worked in a draw software before, you know, it might be a little bit confusing at first. I'm going to save this file so that I can use it in the future. And now we're going to switch over to the recording that I made showing you how I use these digital files to foil my backgrounds. Okay, this is what it looks like when you print your digital files from Kitchen Sink Stamps on your laser printer. You see these are full size sheets of paper. Um, one hint that I can um, give you is to use a smooth paper and I use Hammer Mill premium color copy cover paper. Now you can see the comparison as to the size, height, and width of what I created using LibriDraw. 
and by uh, copying the files into LibreDraw. Here we have the swirls hearts. I'm not sure if I'm calling these by the proper name. I just am calling them by what I see visually. I just love this pattern. It just reminds me of Van Gogh when you turn it um, horizontal. I can make three slimline cards with that, three foiled slimline backgrounds. This one is gorgeous. This buffalo hearts is amazing. There's a little bit of area on the lower left hand corner that didn't print out well, but that's my printer. It has nothing to do with the digital file. I have to change the toner in my printer and I haven't done it yet. And then we have our cute little hearts. And you can see the difference in size and scope compared to what the original file looks like. Thanks for watching and happy foiling.